Um, right, so the purpose of today, as we, uh, we detailed in the invitation and the email that we sent out to everybody, was to give you an idea of how we can use an application called Power BI to develop on reports in ACT um, and use your data in a, uh, in a smarter way. Um, Marcel, as some of you will, uh, will already know Marcel, he's got very excited about the reporting functionality that we can use in Power BI. So he's also sat with me and he's created some of the, uh, the demonstrations that we're going to go through a little bit later. Um, so just to give a quick idea of, uh, of what we're going to cover, um, cut re really recapping on the, uh, the invitation that was sent out. Um, we'll, go, we'll have a look at what Power BI is. I'm sure most people won't actually be aware or, or come across it before. Um, look at why we're choosing to use uh, Power BI for the WebEx. Um, we can also look at a comparison to uh, the existing ACT reports and basically where um, Power BI is a much stronger reporting tool than what's already uh, available in ACT. We can look at the potential of Power BI, so going forward, um, giving people an idea of, of how it could work within your business, because that's the big thing. It's, it's more what you need it to do, we can, we can look at creating for you. Um, then we'll go into a little bit about how DMC uh, can actually help you to utilize Power BI and ACT together. So that at the end, we'll have uh, quite a bit of time for some questions. So if anyone's got anything that we haven't covered um, and they were hoping to see, do just let me know. There is the, the chat functionality at the top of the screen. Um, so if you put any questions in there, then we can, uh, we can look to address that. Right, so uh, to give you an idea of what Power BI is, for those of you who haven't come across it before, it's in a... Uh, analytical tool available from Microsoft. It is free as well. Um, and basically what it allows you to do is, and what we'll go into some detail of, is how you can transform any of your data that you have in ACT into uh, rich visuals or any sort of reports that you need that can be accessed uh, available on your, your desktop, uh, web, or mobile. The big benefit of this as well is it's a live data link. Um, so any of those custom uh, dashboards or reports that you've created can be, can be viewed at home, for example, on your desktop PC, and that's a live link into your, your ACT database using the SQL data. Um, likewise, we can get those reports available on mobile as well. So that, all this is is some uh, screenshots I've made that are made available on the web, giving you an idea of what Power BI can look like when you start to build in those reports and the data that you need. The nice thing about this is and where it does differ to ACT, um, all the reports that you're putting in there are what you need. There's no framework or template uh, before you even get started, so you're not forced into any sort of reports that you, you don't need. Um, if it is, it's only reports that are actually useful for yourself. But that just gives you a couple of screenshots of the, the potential of, of what they could actually look like and some of the reports you can produce. Um, the next area, I've touched on this a little bit, is uh, why Power BI. The reason we're looking at using Power BI is, uh, from our point of view and from our client's point of view, people have become a little bit frustrated with the rigid, rigidness of the, uh, the ACT reports and how mainly they were focused at very specific types of organisation and specific ways that you use ACT. So the benefit of using Power BI would be to open that up a bit so people who use it in a different way have custom fields, um, don't use ACT in the traditional way of the sales and the opportunities, can then uh, produce their own reports from their data that it could have built up over years. Um, the big thing about this is we use these SQL tables. So some of you may be aware uh, ACT works on SQL, um, on a SQL database. So we can pull in any of the SQL tables produced from ACT to create those reports. And on the back of that, that is live as well. So we can set that link. Any changes made in ACT are instantly made in Power BI. So from the point of view, a good example would be any sort of managers or sales managers on the road can get access to that data over their mobile without even having to go into ACT. So it could be some key, key pieces of data that they need to see quickly and easily rather than running a report in ACT or actually having to open their ACT on the desktop. Um, something else we'll show you as well, you can create multiple dashboards um, for different areas of the business. Whereas in ACT at the moment, there is the dashboard. We, like we mentioned, we do find it a little restrictive in the, the parameters you can put in there. So the benefit here is 
you can create uh, dashboards for specific areas of the business. So you could have a, a, a dashboard set up for marketing, a dashboard set up for sales. There could even be a service dashboard. So that can all be set up uh, within ACT, and then you can you can send those those dashboards to the rel relative business areas. Right, so the next area, we'll just show you a few examples that Marcel has actually set up in Power BI uh, using our Act demo database. Um, and the benefit of what we're going to show you here is to really give you quite a broad idea of what Power BI can do. Always bear in mind while we're going through these examples, um, these are just what we've created and what we think might be useful. What we would ideally want from this is, is anyone on the, the WebEx to come back to us and say, actually, I need this, I need that. Um, we'd be in an ideal situation to be able to say, that can be done. We can link that together. We can use that map. Um, and we can use those different parameters against that to create it for yourselves. So don't think here is what basis we would make everybody have. This is an example of what Marcel has put together using our quite simple demo database. So the first area you can see here, what we're using is this report webinar live. This is where I mentioned you can set up multiple different reports for different areas of the business. So with, under reports, before we get started, you can actually have each one of these areas. The reason we've done this is just because it's for webinar purpose, so we can flick through it easily. But what we can have under reports would be contacts, contacts to activities, history, notes, opportunities, could all be listed under here. Then. As I go through, I'll start to show you what you can then do um, for different individuals in the business who need different uh, reporting or different areas. We can then um, start to filter them in and pin them to their main dashboard. So if I go into this contact to start with, so what we've actually set up here is uh, Marcel has used the users that are available in the database. They are your act users. What we've also got, and this is something we've been asked about quite a lot, is the ability to also have a sales manager. So on top of your record manager that's already in act, you could on top of that have a sales manager that potentially doesn't even use act, but then you want to be able to, to, be able to report on that and show that. So if you wanted to start drilling that down, I want to see everybody uh, who Chris Huffman is the record manager of, um, as well as Marcel being the uh, sales manager. So this is showing everybody, Chris Huffman is the record manager, Marcel is actually the sales manager. And then further into that, we can, we can then use any other fields in app to say, I actually only want to see my customers. And you could then choose the area that you actually want to see. And what this is doing is showing that on the map as well and giving you a drill down of the industry. So in our app database, the custom fields we've set up here are industry, sales manager, and even area. So those three fields at the moment, it's impossible to report on them in an act report at the moment. All you'd be able to do is get a list view. On the map itself, what you can then do is actually uh, click on particular particular postal areas, and that will, again, give you a list of everybody in that postal code. So if you've got a sales manager going out to an area and you want to see all their, their companies or their, their contacts, their prospects within a particular postal area, you can do that quickly and easy just by clicking on it. Um, we've also got the referred by field in here, again, which is a, a field from, from Act. Any of the illustrations we show, by just clicking on it, it's going to bring up that, the, where they are on that map. Um, as I've mentioned earlier, keep an open mind into what this will actually show. Um, just go on. So just keep an open mind of what this will actually show in that kind of think how it would work within your business. So if you've got these, these custom fields that you quite like to search on quickly and easy, this can be done. So that's one example using contacts. Uh, Marcel has also set up a second area for, for contacts. This is focusing more on the geography side of things. So we've got uh, three areas here we can actually produce a search on and get a list of our, uh, of our clients or, or prospects or anyone in the database um, from a postal search. So let's have a think. So if, even if I just typed in here, let's think of one we've got hopefully, NR1. No. 
So if we start with the postcode BD, I want to see everyone in the BD area. Could be BD7. If I go for BD7, that's then going to give me a list of everybody in the BD7 area and show me whereabouts they are on the map. If I then clear those selections, it also would give me the option to actually choose by state. Well, it's called state on here at the moment. It was obviously county for, for ourselves in, in England. And then what we can do, if I want to say, I want to produce a search quickly of everybody in North Tyneside, luckily we've got <coughs> one customer here, and it's given me a list of who they are. Also, by Scotland, England, or any, any particular area, and it will show you on that map quickly and easy and produce that list. The benefit of this is your, your salesperson could be on the road and they could quickly go into their, their database, uh, well, their phone, and just quickly have a look. At the, at the customers that are in that area. Also from this list which is being produced here, um, we can choose any field from the contact record that you want to be shown here. So what we've got here, we've got the prospect, uh, customer, that's, that's the category. Marcel's decided to put has pets in there. So that's a custom field that we've set up. Um, but we could put any field in there. So it could be their phone number, their email address, anything in there for the, uh, for the client to be able to, to contact. Um, also, as we showed you on the map before, if I click on any of the uh, the areas on the map, that selection, um, it will also give me a list. So if I just want to quickly see in that that postcode there, NG34, it's going to give me a list of all those those contacts uh, within that area. So that gives you a quick idea of what we could potentially do with the the contacts in Act, um, and you can see. It develops quite heavily on the reports that are available in contacts at the moment. So from a contact point of view, you can do a list view and you can search on that. That's one area. Um, you've also got your reports. Where we have found the reports in that to become a little bit limiting is all this does is produces a list. For some areas, this is still, it's still useful. If you want to produce a, a list of some particular data, that a report is written for, then yes, it is still good. If you potentially hand it to a sales manager um, or a managing director, here's a list with a total at the bottom. And that's an area we find it, it's useful. But what we found from BI is it's quicker, easier to set parameters, time periods, um, and produce that data quickly and easily. There is also the dashboards on Act, which I was going to touch on in a, in a short while, um, and kind of give you a comparison of, of what we can do in BI um, to heavily develop on what is already in here. What we don't like about the, the dashboard itself in Act is the filters and the ability to change that quickly. Um, if we have clients who are using the dashboard area, um, this is a, a key area that, that has been a complaint. So by looking at using Power BI, if I go a bit deeper into this demo, if I look at one of the opportunities, um, what we've actually got set up here is um, how we can more quickly and easily um, look at a time period by user and give a quick total. This is something that can be done at, would just take you a little while. So if we wanted to say here, um, we can pick a particular quarter to look at, a particular user in the database, um, and then you've got your, your quick diagram here to show every opportunity that's open um, in a time period from there to there, so shown for that year. It's going to give um, as many different graphs and visuals as you want of that data. All we've done here is picked out a couple that Marcel would like the look of, um, and all he's done, two graphs and a, a quick total. But this starts to give you an idea where you can start to use your data. The nice thing about this is in any opportunities, there can be custom fields. We can also use the custom fields from opportunities within this report. Uh, something that you definitely cannot do in Act at the moment, as it's only picking up on your, your standard forecasting uh, areas of the uh, of the database. Uh, so skipping back a little bit, we've also got a, uh, a good area that we've, we've created for reporting on activities. Again, it is an area available in Act, but we find it a little bit limiting. What this is in our view, used for a, a quick overview of looking at a user's schedule for a week, for a time period, to check what they've got coming up. Um, again, it can be done in Act. We just find it a bit easier to do it in here, to look at a particular area. 
what we can also do as well is remove and add any activity types um, that, that are relevant to yourself. So using any custom activity types that you've set up, which a lot of our clients have. You've also got the ability to look for a year, a quarter, a month, or just a particular day. So if you come in in the morning, you want to see what people have got scheduled for that day without having to go into their their act user, which can be a little bit time consuming. So if I wanted to go into my task list in act, I, that's not a problem. Um, but then to then start selecting users and seeing what you want to see, um, you would have to go into here, select a particular users, choose the time period. But what we what we what we found in here is it's a lot quicker and easier to be able to do that. And again, keep your, keep the mind open about what the potential of of using Power BI could be because you're you're adding further functionality to to features that are already in Act. Then regards history, uh, an area that's obviously very important in any CRM. What we can do is again drill down and look at users' particular history. Um, make sure at the very basic level people are using the database, but it also gives you the ability to analyse uh, what type of histories uh, people are, are mainly mainly using. Um, and then what we can do if there are particular histories in here that you don't use, they can be removed. So there's going to be a lot of people who, who don't manage um, complaints. That's a custom area we've put in, but in this case, we're using that, that custom field. Right. Um, moving on to the, the notes area, so you've seen on each area we've got uh, an easy to edit date period. So if you want to pick any particular date out, you can, you can quickly look at that in here. Where that would be useful as well will be for forecasting, for histories, um, and this is actually an area we've even started to use internally on our CRM system. Um, so it is, it's not just... Uh, so we're pushing to our clients, we've actually found this more useful than our own reporting system internally. So if we want to produce a... So that can show that time period, the user, um, and notes, which is something that we don't recommend people using, but we still know people who have used who have been using that for years have used notes. So therefore, this is shown we, we have got the ability to actually use the notes tables within Act as well to produce reports. So if people are, are still using notes, it's not a problem. You can't report on it internally in Act, but you can uh, using Power BI. The opportunity area was an area I touched on earlier, just giving an idea of, of what we can do. Um, while I'm on this area as well, I did mention this slightly earlier. Um, from a main user's point of view, if they've started to produce uh, multiple uh, dashboards um, like we've shown here in reports that are containing different different areas that you might find useful. What you can actually see is there's a little pin here. By using that pin visual, that actually then puts it onto my, my main dashboard. So there could be particular areas out of all of these reports that I actually find useful. And then from there, I can put that on my main dashboard that there's my welcome when I come in. So if I go onto that dashboard, this is showing four areas that I've actually already pinned. So if we go on to the second area of opportunities that we've, we've also done as well. This is showing, again, a few more visuals that we can create based on time period um, and also given a list of those opportunities. So what this is, is basically a, a development of the opportunity dashboard that's already within, within Act. So we've got the, the pipeline um, and the closed sales to date that can be all added to one particular dashboard, so if we go to the opportunities here as well. What we've done is basically developed on this area, um, made the filters easy to use, and given the ability to easily access on the road as well from that live data. 
So if we go back into there, by clicking on any of these areas, we can then drill down into that and it will give me a list of all those opportunities there and by particular record manager as well. So we've got a, a simple line graph here showing the uh, the sales from 2015 2017. So it's a good way to start building trends on opportunities or even activities to show the um, productivity of, uh, of any of the users quickly and easily. And this can be... Uh, Managed here by time period as well. So as I've said, it, all, all we're trying to do today is kind of open up people's thoughts into to how they could use Power BI, use act data that's previously you've been able to report on. Um, we know the amount of people these days that are now using custom fields to, to get more out of that database, and there's a lot of valuable data in people's act database that, that isn't being utilized at the moment as much as it could. A, an area as well that we, we have looked to um, use in uh, by using Power BI is developing on something that quite a few people have started to speak to us about, using the opportunities area in a different way to the, the old traditional way of simply sales. Um, a lot of people who use that still do use it in this way. Um, and obviously, that, that isn't a problem. It is the key key functionality of the the software, but when we speak to a lot of people, people say they don't use opportunities because they don't sell anything, or they don't they don't sell like the way Act manages. What we can also do in here is manage uh, anything from service. So if people are calling in looking for a service to be provided, or a support ticket, or a case to be opened, functionality that is available in much much more expensive CRM. So. You're, you're looking at probably spending six, seven times as much on a CRM that pro provides the ability to manage cases. What we can do here is, if we go into any of these opportunities that are already open, we can set up a separate process. And we do actually have quite a few clients using this now. So if we go to this process, at the moment, this is just set up for sales. So the stages of sales, pretty standard um, for, for most industries. But what we can also do here is set up either service or support. And what we've done is by setting up a support, we can set up different stages of support. So if someone calls in with any sort of issue or any complaint or anything that needs seeing to and needs tracking within the CRM, so you've got that audit trail can be managed in here. And what we can do is set up those different stages. So Marcel set some up here, and I think this was for a previous client we actually worked with around these, these similar levels. So from issue received, assigned to engineer, and assigned to supplier, all the way through to actually resolving that issue. Then if we go back into, into BI, what we've set up here is actually a support ticket, per, a support ticket uh, dashboard as one way of looking at it. So what this could do is show a list of any issues that are outstanding, any complaints. So basically in, increasing customer service using the CRM, and it's opening up the database and, and the reporting in ways that people didn't really know ACT could actually work. Um, so then, like I say, all we're doing here is then it's given a list who it's been assigned to. So that could be an engineer, it could be a user within the database, could be could be anything. Um, but it's showing where those support tickets are and how they're being addressed. So it is, it is an area that was quite popular in, uh, in last week's uh, WebEx as well. So I know that's a quick, quite a quick, brief overview of, of what we've set up on BI. What I can actually show you now is a little bit about how these are, are actually um, created. Not in too much detail. i am uh, leave that more to Marcel. But when we go to actually edit this report, you can see here, um, with, with some guidance, we can, we can start to get users using this um, for themselves, starting to reduce tables for themselves and managing that going forward. We can see here there are several visualizations that are, that are standard within the database. Um, furthermore, there is a almost like a web, it's like a web shop or almost like that where it, you have free downloads available uh, to download visualizations to put into your, your database. What we've got here is a list of all the SQL tables relating to all the fields in the database. Um, and then by doing that, we can pull in those, uh, those fields against different, different criteria to create those reports. 
some of the visual, visualizations we've got in here are so we've got field map, a funnel diagram. So again, good for the uh, the forecasting. And something that's not available in that, you can actually create a KPI in here. So you can put targets against uh, any opportunities, histories um, for users to, to meet those KPIs and be able to look at that quickly and easily at the end of the week, for example, or, or end of the month and produce a report that at the moment you could be exporting into Excel um, and playing about with to get the, the right results that you need rather than this, this will be saved and a live data feed. The kind of leads on to, to how and why DMC can, can look to help you with Power BI and Act. Um, as most of you are aware, DMC are the leading uh, business partner globally now for Act. Um, as part of that, it's, it's come from the services we offer more than just Act itself. Um, so some of you will, will already have met Master and our other, our other training guys. Um, looking at helping people get more out of ACT rather than just being box shifters. What we have, we also have the experience in, in Office 365 and the Microsoft application. So we have been, been using Power BI internally for, for quite a while now. So we have quite a lot of experience in setting up custom reports. Um, and we already have some users actually starting to use Power BI now as well. And it is an area even Swift Page directly, we believe are gonna start using in the new year. So we are, um, in an advantage already um, from our point of view and our experience in that. We can, as I said, what we would probably get you to do is actually speak in a bit more detail to your account manager about what you're actually looking for and then we can start to say what would be involved in setting that up. Um, and as I've kind of shown today, it is relatively easy to set up. So going forward, if you ever need a new report setting up, it's not like the old days of um, putting a request into us, us quoting around three days for it to produce a report that can be done in probably two or three minutes on here, and that would be by yourself as well. So it's quite a big, big benefit. We would support this internally as well if you had any problems. Um, and the, obviously the big thing is Power BI is actually a free application um, at its basic level. Um, for the full pro level, which means you can publish it on the web so all your users can see it if you send it to them, is only 9.99 a month. So it is a very, very cost-effective uh, reporting tool for how powerful it is. 